Ahoy, you scurvy dogs. I'm going to show you in this video how to approach, how to board, and how to steal treasure from some of the toughest crews out on the seas. If you follow these techniques and these strategies I'm about to share with you, you will end up with some beautiful treasure of your own and maybe even encounter some salty pirate legends. The most important thing in any good heist is your approach, and you want to hide your approach by using rocks or islands so that the crew that you're trying to steal from has no idea what's coming for them. In this case, we're after a galleon with a reaper chest on board, and we use the big rock near Plunder Valley to hide our approach. Once we parked our ship, we jumped off and we were in for a long swim. As we started to approach, we noticed that the galleon had finished up with whatever they were doing here on the island, and they started to sail away. Which brings me to my next point. Sometimes you have to adjust your strategy. And in this case, we noticed that the galleon was heading towards Sharkbait Cove, which is an island I know has some rocks around it that we could hide behind. Now, when you're coming up against experienced crews, to win, you have to do the unexpected. It gives you the advantage. And in this case, this crew was doing a very smart maneuver by not bringing up their sails and slowly circling the island, which means I had to plan my board from a long distance. With a bit of luck, I was able to line myself up for a proper board. And this is when things get a little interesting. As soon as I hit the ladder, the person on board spots me, which means you need to move quickly once you have been spotted. Now, one of the most important things you can do in a situation like this is to keep your wits. And in this case, as soon as I went down below, I heard a new cutlass draw, which means I knew there was another pirate on board and I needed to move quickly or I would be soon overrun by pirates, which is a great reminder to keep calm and evaluate your surroundings. Anytime you board a ship, you're not exactly sure what you're running into and you want to quickly evaluate what's going on and try to grasp the situation at hand. And of course you don't want to forget to drop the anchor, which I almost did just there. With the pirate sense of the ferryman, I'm now on the hunt for the reaper chest. Once I find it, I tell my mate to bring the sloop around from behind the rock, and I'm going to jump off the ship here on the front and board it. As in any good heist, you want to make sure you have an exit strategy. In this case, our exit strategy could have been planned a little bit better, but sometimes, you know, accidents happen and things you have to adjust with what's happening. In a situation like this, you want to prioritize defending your ship. Now, their the first guy. priority will be to drop your anchor, so you are going to want to defend that anchor at all costs. In this case, my mate jumped onto the anchor, so my job was to protect him while he picked it back up. As soon as we got the anchor back up, we turned the ship around and started to head towards the Reaper hideout. The galleon crew quickly caught up, especially since the wind was to their advantage, so we tried to slow them down with cannonballs. In this case, we had some cursed cannonballs, specifically a rigging ball, which reminds me always you want to be stocked up and have supplies. Now, I have no idea how I <laughs> nailed that rigging ball. Maybe it was a bit of luck, maybe it was the whale lord, I have no clue. But once I hit them with the rigging ball, I tried to shoot over and board their ship but they were able to quickly adjust, showing how good this crew is. And I was not able to get aboard, but I almost did. I almost did. As we got closer to the Reaper hideout, the galleon was able to close the gap and eventually hit us with a rigging ball, which means we had to adjust quickly as a sloop crew. They now had a significant advantage. So with the sloop being the most maneuverable ship in the seas, we used that to our advantage to try to get away between the rocks. Now in a situation like this, the last thing you ever want to have happen is one of your crewmates get knocked off, especially when you need them to be repairing. So I told my mate to go down below and start working on repairs as I started to sail us between the rocks. Keeping situational awareness, I knew they'd be sending a border, so you want to watch for pirates and enemy borders at any given chance. So I straighten out the wheel and back up to get a view of both ladders. 
and that is when I heard this pirate grab the ladder. Now watch what he does when I try to shoot him with the blunderbuss. He slides down the ladder and avoiding my shot getting aboard the sloop. And like a good pirate he goes right for the anchor and I try to catch it. Now right here I know what's about to happen. This pirate is about to come hit me on the anchor, possibly taking me out of the fight. So I make a judgment call. I allow the anchor to drop, bring out my blunderbuss and help my mate bring this pirate down. Alright, help me pick it up. With the pirate sent to the ferryman, we know we need to get on the move as quickly as possible. So we both bring up the anchor and set sail once again. With the galleon still on the chase and now heading towards us on the other side of the rocks, we decide to use the sloop to our advantage. Specifically what I'm talking about here is the sloop is the most maneuverable ship on the seas. So we do a quick anchor drop, turning the ship around, hopefully keeping the rock between us and the galleon at all times so that they do not see what we're doing. My hope is that we stay hidden and the rocks keep us hidden so that as we maneuver around back towards the reaper hideout, the galleon has to go all the way around to try to catch us. With our quick thinking, we were able to head right back towards the reaper hideout, leaving this crew in our dust and with their beautiful reaper bounty chest on board. Now, with the wind completely against us, the sloop is at the advantage, so we knew they had no way of catching us. So we got as close as we possibly could to the reaper hideout so we could just jump right off onto the shore and we easily turned in the reaper bounty. Now I hope you enjoyed this video and I wanted to share that it doesn't matter if you're on a sloop, a brig or a galleon. If you use your wits and you strategize and you keep your heads about you, you can steal from any ship on the seas. All it takes is a bit of strategy and a bit of luck and possibly a good grog before you do it and you can pull it off. If you like this video, please consider subscribing and help me reach my goal of becoming a Sea of Thieves partner. And if I've not yet earned your sub, please let me know in the comments below how to improve so that I can learn from you. Thanks for watching mates and as always remember, shoot first and ask questions later. Oh, they're still, they're still coming toward us. Oh, they want revenge. They want sweet <laughs> revenge. <laughs> oh, they're gonna murder me. They're gonna murder me. Should I defend myself? <laughs> no. I, oh my gosh. What did they send someone over? I Pit bot. Pit bot. Hey, what's up, matey? All right, all right, you know who I am. I'll, I'm not gonna fight, I'm not gonna shoot. I'm just gonna stand here. I'm gonna put my gun away. Blake, Zang. You're gonna, you're gonna blunder me? Is this how it's gonna, oh, you are! <laughs> That's what you get for blundering me in the face! <laughs> I killed them both! <laughs> Did he say he knew you? The one, well, one guy knew me and I killed him. And then the other guy uh, was like, all right, I'm not going to shoot. And then he totally shot me. Uh...